Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time I wanted to focus on unit one, specifically looking at muscle structure and fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. Many of you have got the unit one exam coming up in January. And so I thought this would be a good revision source for you just to recap any of the lesson materials that you might need for the exam. So one of the first things that we need to know about are the types of muscle that we can encounter. So first of all, you've got smooth muscle. Now smooth muscle is usually under unconscious control and it's found in the walls of all of our internal organs. So things like the walls of our intestines, the walls of our stomach. And this muscle is really responsible for kind of moving things around, for example, in the stomach, mixing off food together so that it can be passed on to the intestine. And in the intestine, the contractions of the intestine will pass the waste products through the entire length of it. The second type of muscle is cardiac muscle. And this is again under unconscious control. When I say unconscious control, I simply mean that we don't have to tell it to work. So cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. And the third type of muscle, and this is the muscle that you'll get asked about in unit one, is skeletal muscle. And this is under voluntary control. This is the muscle that we use to move. So what you need to know about this muscle is its structure and its function. So one of the first things that I want to show you is this image over here. Now, what I want you to imagine is the entire muscle that might be in your arm or your leg, for example, if I was to slice it in half, I would see a whole bundle of muscle fibers that basically make up that entire muscle tissue. I use this analogy of spaghetti in a packet to help you understand how the muscle fibers might be composed or put together. So if you imagine a packet of spaghetti, each of those strands is known as something known as a myofibril. And if we put lots of those together, that's what forms our muscle tissue. So similarly, in our muscle, we've got bundles of these muscle fibers that are put together to form the muscle tissue. If we were to zoom in a little bit more, we'd start to understand some of the internal structures of the muscle. So first of all, you've got a um, structure known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now the sarcoplasmic reticulum is essentially just like a membrane that will store the calcium ions that are needed for muscle contraction. Now in unit one, they won't necessarily ask you about the calcium ions in too much detail, but it's good to know what the sarcoplasmic reticulum does. There's also another structure known as T-tubules or transverse tubules. And these are parts of the cell membrane that will just fold inwards and they will stick to something known as the cytoplasm. You've heard of the cytoplasm already when you studied the cells, but in muscles, we call the cytoplasm the sarcoplasm. So that's another key word that you also need to be aware of. And these transverse tubules are really important because their job is to help to spread that electrical impulse that you've learned about in terms of action potential and so on. Their job is to spread that electrical impulse throughout the sarcoplasm so it can reach all parts of the muscle fiber and allow that muscle fiber to contract when you need it to. So when we zoom in a little bit more into the myofibrils, what we see is that it's made up of two key types of protein. And these are your contractile proteins. One of the proteins is known as myosin, and the other one is known as the actin. And we call each of the cells of the muscle a sarcomere. If I show you my pointer and you can see these lines going downwards over here, the space between each of these lines is known as a sarcomere, and that's one cell. Each of these will be fused together to create the continuous myofibril that you can see on the slide now. So we want to learn a little bit more about myosin and actin. Now, like I said, these are your contractile proteins and they form the myofilaments. The actin filament is a really thin filament and it's made up of these fibrous proteins, two strands of it that are twisted around each other, a bit like the helix shape that you see on the slide now. The myosin filament, on the other hand, is thicker. Now, most of the myosin filament is kind of this fibrous protein, but it's got these what we call myosin heads that you can see sticking out over here. And you can see my um, kind of dot hovering over them. So you've got lots of these globular heads kind of sticking out. If I was to create a myosin molecule like an animation over here, you'd have the fibrous protein, so the, the longer bit over here, and you'd have the globular head at the end over here. So that's what we call the myosin head. Now, the function of that myosin head is really important in allowing muscle contraction. 
If you need to know a little bit more about sliding filament theory, I will create another video about this, but easily you could just search for that on um, YouTube and you'll find some really, really good videos about the sliding filament theory, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. So this is like a diagram. It's basically showing you the structure of each of the sarcomeres. So we said that the sarcomere is one muscle cell and the end of the sarcomere produces what we call Z lines that are on the end of each of the sarcomeres. Now, if we were to slice along the myofilament, what we would see is we would see the thicker myosin over here that's pointing, that's the hand that's pointing over there, the thicker myosin in the middle, and you would see the thinner actin filaments, which are the blue filaments, filaments on the edges over here. And you can see that in some part of the sarcomere, there is this overlap between the myosin and the actin. So if we were to slice along here, you would see something like this, where you've got the thicker filaments and you've also got the thinner filaments um, kind of within there. If I slice along here, I would only ever see the thick filaments. I would only ever see the myosin. If I slice along over here, I would just see the thinner filaments. So it's quite important to know how these filaments are arranged in each of the sarcomeres. This particular part of the video shows you the key words that might come up. So what I suggest you do is you pause the video right now and copy this out or put it onto flashcards so you can use this to help with your revision. So the next part that you need to be aware of is the difference between fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. So what I've got over here is to show you the difference in terms of diagrammatically how they differ from each other. The slow twitch muscle fibers are the ones that we use for kind of endurance sports. So they're used really for long distance running. And as we go through this particular image that you can see on the slide, you can see that the fast twitch would really be the muscle fibers that were used in sprinting or in boxing like I'm doing over here. So slow twitch mainly for endurance sports and long term aerobic respiration takes place in slow twitch fibers. And in fast twitch fibers, you're really just looking at um, very, very quick respiration. So anaerobic respiration and quick muscle contraction. So what I've got is a comparison table over here that shows you a difference in terms of their structure, location and their general properties. So if we look at slow twitch fibers first, we know that slow twitch fibers contain large store of myoglobin and that myoglobin is essentially very similar uh, protein um, when we compare it to hemoglobin and it's got a rich oxygen supply. Slow twitch muscle fibers also have a blood supply that will provide lots of oxygen and also many mitochondria that will help with the respiratory process. Remember, mitochondria is the site of respiration in terms of producing ATP, and that ATP is what we would need for energy for muscle contraction. So you need to make those links when you're talking about slow twitch muscle fibers. Slow twitch muscle fibers are located in the calf muscles. And just as an example, obviously they're located all over your body in different parts, but calf muscles is a good example to give. And in terms of their general properties, they contract slower um, and they respire aerobically for longer periods of times when compared to fast twitch. And the reason they can respire aerobically is because they've got a really rich blood supply and a myoglobin oxygen store. And so they will allow you to have this constant supply of oxygen as you exercise. In comparison, the fast twitch muscles have much more uh, myosin filaments and a larger store of a chemical known as glycogen. We'll talk about what glycogen does in a second. We talk about um, in terms of fast twitch, we talk about how they can contract faster and therefore provide shorter bursts of very powerful contractions. And they're really adapted for very quick sports. So things like weightlifting, sprinting, boxing. So I've got like a comparison over here that should help you understand the function of slow and fast twitch. So in slow twitch muscle fibers, the energy is released slowly through aerobic respiration. And each of the fibers in slow twitch muscle fibers have lots and lots of mitochondria for ATP production. Um, the fibers will also have lots of blood vessels to provide oxygen for aerobic respiration. In terms of fast twitch muscle fibers, they will contract very quickly and they get tired very quickly. And something that I've not written 
written on there is that they tend to respire more anaerobically than aerobically. Now, I said earlier that fast twitch muscle fibers have a supply of glycogen. Glycogen is a really important chemical because it's a source of glucose and it can undergo something known as glycolysis to release energy for the muscle fiber. Glycogen is essentially used in respiration to produce ATP, and that ATP can then be used for muscle contraction. So that's really important for you to be able to know and write down in your revision notes. So I've got some past paper questions to kind of talk you through to help you understand the demands of the questions and the kind of keywords that you'd need to mention. So this first one over here says skeletal muscle enables voluntary movement. Figure three, which is the image that you can see there, shows skeletal muscle, muscle fibers and myofibrils. Name the two contractile proteins found in skeletal muscle myofibril. So you might want to pause the video now and write down your answer. So as you wrote down your answer, you should have said that actin and myosin are your two contractile proteins that you would find in muscle fibers. The next part of the question says, name the cell surface membrane of the skeletal muscle cell. Again, lots of students tend to get this particularly confused because there's so many key terms to know. But in terms of what the cell surface membrane is, you should know that it's the sarcolemma. You shouldn't say sarcomere because that's actually the muscle cell. And you shouldn't say sarcoplasm because that's the same as the cytoplasm of the cell. The next question said skeletal muscle contains large stores of glycogen. Explain the function of glycogen in skeletal muscle. So if you just pause the video now and have a go at answering this question from the material that I've just covered, then we can go through the mark scheme. Okay, so the mark scheme says that you have to say that glycogen is a source of energy or an energy store. You could even say it's a source of glucose. That glucose goes forward for respiration and produces ATP. And for another point, you could say that that ATP is used for muscle contraction or movement. So learning it in terms of the mark scheme is quite important, I think. It means that you don't write too much in the exam, particularly when time is of the essence. And it also means that you're kind of getting straight to the point where the examiner can qualify you that mark without having having to read through tons of waffle. The next question talks about two main types of skeletal muscle fiber. It talks about slow twitch and fast twitch. And it says that marathon runners have a higher percentage of slow twitch fibers in their skeletal muscles. It also goes on to say that there's more mitochondria in slow twitch fibers than in fast twitch fibers, and that marathon runners can run longer distances than sprinters. The actual question says, explain, so say how having more mitochondria in the muscle fibers enables the marathon runners to run for longer distances than sprinters. So feel free to pause the video now so you can have a go at this question. The question is for four marks, by the way, so you need to make four key points. Okay, so in terms of the mark scheme, one of the main things you need to say is talk about in terms of the mark scheme, one of the main things you need to make reference to is the mitochondria, because that's what the question is asking you. So the first thing I would say in terms of the mitochondria is say that it's the site of aerobic respiration, then you can link that saying that if there's many more mitochondria, then you will produce much more energy or much more ATP. If you've got um, lots of mitochondria and you've got lots of aerobic respiration taking place, then you will also produce less lactic acid. Remember, lactic acid is a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. And then a final point to talk about the fact that because the slow twitch muscle fibers are aerobically respiring, they will take a longer time to tire. You could also talk about the fact that muscles won't be exhausted as quickly. So hopefully that's quite helpful for you in understanding how you could answer an extended response type question. So if you've got any more questions about this, then give me a shout by leaving me a comment underneath the video. Please share this video with anyone who you think might find it useful. I will be posting up some more videos before the actual exam. So just give me a shout if you've got any requests at all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.